Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we're just a giddy couple in love that loves reacting to some Genshin Impact. Giddy for Genshin! Yeah, and so we're checking out Genshin Impact event, uh, The Chalk Prince and the Dragon. Really like the title of this event, so looking forward to it. It's uh, gonna be in three parts. So if you're watching with us on Patreon, we're gonna upload it uh, weekly. And if you're watching with us on YouTube, then you're gonna see it all at once. You ready to do this? I'm ready. But first. We have a drink! Yeah. Of course we do. This is Genshin! So we have Klee's Sparkling Bomb. Cheers. Cheers. Huh, looks like Timaeus isn't here today. <laughs> Customers? Oh, um, pardon me. Are you looking for Timaeus? No, no. Just strange for him to not be around. Paimon always sees him standing here. I see. He was called away by Albedo a little while ago. I was called over to attend to the store. I'm Sucrose, Albedo's assistant. Yes, Sucrose. If you have any alchemy-related queries, you could always ask me. I do my best to help. Aww. Huh? Do I look nervous? Yeah. A little bit. M my apologies. I don't get out too often. I'm usually in the laboratory where there aren't many others to talk to. I get to touch some grass. If you need any help, just call my name. If not, I'll... I'll be reading a book. Over there. Nerd! Thanks! No worries. We're all caught up on the basics of alchemy, aren't we? Hey! Aren't you the legendary traveler? The one who repelled storm terror? Legendary is a bit much. No, don't say that. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I've heard so many stories about you. Always wanted an opportunity to research you up close. Uh, to research <laughs> not us. <laughs> research. Uh, sorry, don't mind me. What am I saying? Still, you'd definitely be able to help Albedo. It is you after all. There's that name again, Albedo. Is he also an alchemist in Mondstadt? That I am familiar with. Think I might have heard of him. We've heard of him because we've seen his. I never his introduced lane. him. Albedo is the Knights of Favonius' chief alchemist. He's also Timaeus and my teacher. Hmm. But Paimon's only ever seen Timaeus teaching alchemy, so that means Albedo is a teacher. Teacher. I was gonna learn from somebody. Yes. He's dedicated himself to investigating the truth of this world, and has made many an important breakthrough. We often get alchemists coming to Mondstadt from all over Tevat, seeking his help. They say that the subtlest of guidance from Mr. Albedo helps him to solve the most unfathomable of problems. Wow! Go, <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was such a big deal! Mm-hmm. Still, it seems that he's encountered a problem in his research recently. Every time I see him, he has a concerned look on his face. Hmm. I'm sure that Albedo would love to hear about your incredible exploits. I know it would bring him lots of new inspiration. Albedo is a true gentleman. He'll be sure to pay you back in equal measure for helping him out. Hmm. I don't see why not. Testing the limits of living beings' capabilities is one of Albedo's areas of research, after all. Albedo and Testing Timaeus the will be conducting research in the mountains right now. I'd love to take you both to see him, but somebody has to attend to the store. I'm afraid you'll have to go to the entrance to the pass and look for him by yourselves. Look out for a refined gentleman with the presence of a true scholar. I think and she's a bit in love with him. I think so. Um, sorry. That's the best I can do. You'll have to do your best. You could have told us like his hair color or like his eye, eye color. color. Relative height. Yeah. How much he benches. <laughs> I bet you if we asked her to describe his butt, she totally could. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Is that what all researchers are like? Anyway, let's go and look for Albedo. Sister Rosaria, so here you are. Choir practice is about to... I've told you already, I don't go in for that kind of thing. I've got more important matters to attend to. Mm. What would Whoopi Goldberg say? 
This event has commemorative significance. The church hopes that all sisters will be present. Hopes? That's odd, because I don't recall a fulfill the hopes of others clause in my job description. <laughs> Okay. I, well, I mean, sure, but... <laughs> I mean, but sure, but... but... You're the event organizer, aren't you? Do you not find it the least bit odd? What do you mean? This far out from Mondstadt at this hour? <sighs> Even if you set out right now, I'll wager you'd still miss the opening ceremony. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe this is someone's grand plan to make a fool out of you. Ouch! Oh. Huh? That can't be. People aren't like that. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> Some Evidence people are like decides that. decides what people are like, not your feelings. <sighs> Maybe you're a little too trusting of other people. Maybe you're a little too Don't suspicious. Fret. Nobody's yeah. going to blame you too if you cynical. go back empty-handed. I can't imagine anyone else was delusional enough to think I was going to show <laughs> up. But if you dally any longer, wow. you really won't make it. You're right. It's a very important commemorative event. If I'm late, then... Uh, right, I've got to get going. Oh. Mm -hmm. hmm. Seems like that nun's an expert in making people believe anything she wants. I thought I heard something. Who are you and why are you eavesdropping? I we better watch noise. out. She <laughs> seems like a dangerous villain. Or a trickster at best. Oh, she's oh, really? pretty cool. I'm a member of the long-standing Favonius Church. You're an eavesdropping pixie from oh! who knows <laughs> And you think I'm the trickster? Wait, she heard that? <laughs> Simon was whispering so quietly. And as for this outlander you seem to be following... Uh, huh. So it's you. Damn right. The honorary knight that saved us from storm terror. Well then, given your status, I won't press you on your reasons for eavesdropping. Oh. Otherwise, mm -hmm. depending okay. on your answer, I could have arrested you on the spot. Yeah, I bet you like to slap my handcuffs. Do the nuns of Mondstadt have the authority to arrest people now? We can't go turning a blind eye to hidden dangers, can we? Why shouldn't sisters have a sense of justice? So she's a sister that cop. Sound right. mm -hmm. But Paimon can't think of a good comeback. <laughs> That's a first. Yeah, I know, right? About you. What are you doing in the mountains? We're looking for Albedo. But you're only a traveler. I doubt you have any great skill in alchemy. Whatever. You don't know us. I had a notion of who you were seeking. If it's him you're after, I made a point of noting his tracks. Many people have made their way up after the snowstorm. Let's hope they're still there. So, are you also looking for him? No, this is just a professional habit of mine. I sensed elemental traces in these tracks. Never hurts to be vigilant. As far as go, you're fairly mysterious. Yep. You're more I like a detective. I don't care what you think. Come on, then. I'd like to see what he's up to anyway. Well, I mean, calling you more of a detective isn't an insult. Mm -hmm. in the tracks. They should show up pretty clearly with Seems elemental defensive. sight. Her defensive? I don't know her that well, but she seems like, you know, she's pretty open-minded and welcoming and non-judgmental. Oh yeah, definitely non-judgmental. Like the word on the street is he loves sketching. He'll hang around anywhere for a good landscape. The views and scenery here are pretty good. Sketches everywhere you look. But can't he see those hilly churros? Isn't he in danger? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Who are you? Why did you alarm them? Thank the gods I'd already completed my sketch. Would have been a shame to leave these particular hilly churls unfinished. What's up with sketching hilly churls? Hmm. What makes them so interesting? They're part hmm. of this one? I'm afraid the answer isn't easy to explain. If you'd like to have a look at my sketch, it may give you a clue. He sketches them how they truly are. Wow! Look at the detail! I'm the but some of it I know. seems to have been done in a hurry. You can find these holy trolls anywhere. Quite boring, in fact. Not worth closer inspection. But take a look at this specimen. The build, the coat, and there's a distinct force at work here. 
In the cyclical lives of such primitive communities, such unique attributes are an indication of evolution at work. Evolution, the transition from nothing into existence, from the known to the other. Oh, he's an artist, all right. Bullshit Hold artist. Hold your horses. Ugh, something tells me we're in for a thesis and I'm not about the stamina. We found your man. I shouldn't like her, but I do. <laughs> I think it's because I went to Catholic what? school. And Don't you have any questions? She's a hot nun. Hey! Uh, what a weirdo. So Sister Rosaria brought you. Surprising. And I didn't have time to thank her. But back to the point. From her words, it seems that you were looking for me. I can tell you in our words. We met a girl in Mondstadt, Sucrose. She said you were stuck with your research. I see. So Sucrose sent you here. Then, if I'm not mistaken, you must be the honorary knight. You've got the whole of Mondstadt talking. I've heard a bit of everything. Your actions during Storm Terror's attack, your elemental control, and quite a few other mysterious things. What might that I'll be? I'll skip to the conclusion. There's only Thanks. one possibility after all. You came from afar. From another world, correct? You're worthy of your scholarly re reputation. If I could procure your assistance, I think my research would benefit enormously. Uh, forgive me. This must be confusing. Where should I begin? At the beginning. Mm -hmm. The essence of life? Sounds like a That's beginning. beginning. <laughs> you want to start with that? This is going to be a long one. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> You're right. Giving a demonstration would be better than trying to explain. Yeah, cool. For okay. For example, awakening life. Breathing new life into fallen leaves. Okay, it's pretty impressive. You should plant that now. You can do that? I think it may disappear. However, I have a particular seed in my possession. The method I'm talking about has produced no results. You must have your kid it. And that it hails from another world. Helping it to grow, to bloom. And that's the problem my research is up against. That's where I need your assistance. Well, if you're struggling to figure it out, Paimon's not sure we're gonna be much assistance. I beg to differ. I'm unable to comprehend the intricacies of life outside of the known world. But you're not from the known world. By observing and researching you, I may just be able to find a way to get the seed to sprout. Uh, shall we just get out of here? <laughs> a little freaky. <laughs> Mora, knowledge, and the answer to the question you are seeking. It happens to be an answer that I can provide. How does that sound? Time oh, for a change you had time on it, Mora. We should be going. There's research to do. You know, it had an exclamation point when you said there's research to do, but it didn't sound like he like said it a lot. Emphasis. Yeah. that traveler yeah. seemed to have hit it off. Takes a weirdo to know one, I guess. <laughs> I wonder, does this constitute a risk to Mondstadt? Am I got the handcuffs and people. Question. Maybe rip them a little After bit. the seed sprouts, will it grow into anything? I don't know, but I feel the importance will lie in the method, not the endpoint. Using alchemy to awaken otherworldly life into that would constitute a big leap in my understanding of the essence of life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. After awakening, even creation may be possible. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hurt her head. Still a little difficult to understand. No. But what's the seed gonna become? Isn't that more interesting than whatever it was you were saying? Well, <laughs> if it turns out to be exactly. a delicious fruit, dinner's on me. Yay! Paimon's but we go to it. Well, let's just say I uh, occasionally have to look after a child. Another lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. I suppose it's like that's always the way it is with you. Alchemy related disciplines I'm any good at. The subject of my first research was the elements. In this world, manipulating the elements requires a vision. So is that what sucrose is? Though I can't see anything Just resembling kidding. one on your person. How hmm. you're able to freely manipulate elemental power is something I'd like to ascertain. I've got a few questions in that regard. Firstly, 
Do you have any extra organs? <laughs> what? A second heart? A fourth stomach? Something I could sell on the market, you know. Right? <laughs> Fascinating. And this floating child is connected to your body in some way? From your world, dude. What a stupid question. Mm -hmm. Can you see the gap between <laughs> It's Paimon, not floating you child. tell him, Paimon. Way to go, Paimon. I was merely considering the possibility that you were an external organ. Perhaps there is some invisible force connecting you. I got Paimon oh, with a fishing rod. That rules out that possibility. I wonder, did Paimon guide the elemental power to you? But that would mean that Paimon's elemental power would be enough to break through a mountain rock at least 10 meters thick. <laughs> Or cause the waterfall south of Springville to flow backwards. Hmm. No, that definitely can't be it. You're breaking Paimon's brain. Mm -hmm. you know anyway? In that case, it would appear that there's no obvious difference between the composition of your body and that of the humans in this world. Given that there's clearly a discrepancy in her research, it seems that only experimentation will yield the answers. Firstly, this mysterious elemental power. I'd like to examine exactly how it manifests externally. Let me lure a few slimes to the area. Perhaps you'd be able to defeat them. Perhaps. Using whatever method comes most naturally to you. Definitely able to defeat some huh? slime. Doesn't seem very sciencey. Direct and clear observation are imperative to a good experiment. This is just a simple exercise. Naturally, if you require a greater challenge, we could bring in six oceanids. Slimes. Do it. Slimes are <laughs> well, prepare yourself. The slimes will be here any moment. Great. Okay. Slimes. Great work. Did you feel anything out of the ordinary? If you're injured, I have a few emergency potions ready. Not a scratch. Excellent. According to my observations, the manifestation of the external elemental flow is as expected. Elemental reactions are normal. There is nothing out of the ordinary. Now that we know that the external flow is manifesting normally, let's test the internal flow. Internal flow? How do you test that? It's very simple. I can use alchemy to create a potion that will extract elemental power. If the elemental power is stored or accumulated physically within your body, this potion may elicit an elemental reaction. Sounds kind of terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. In the normal course of events, you'd feel some temporary queasiness. No bodily injury. And in the abnormal course of events? If anything unexpected occurs, I've made the necessary preparations. Try not to worry. Well, it's not that there aren't any risks involved. But if there is anything blocking your elemental flow, we'll be able to locate it with this test. Just a warning. If an internal elemental reaction occurs for any other reason, that's a bad sign. Hmm. Yes, that's an excellent way to think about it. Before we get started, the potion we'll use for the test is missing a catalyst. We'll need to find it. It's a type of ore known as star silver, but unfortunately not all of it is suitable. I'll take you to my campsite. We can gather some star silver ore on the way. I'll point out any likely contenders. All going to plan. We should be able to begin concocting the potion when we get to the campsite. Paimon's still got a few safety concerns, <laughs> but it seems like there's a silver lining. Let's keep our eyes open. This is my campsite. I've added the materials we collected to the concoction. While we are waiting, have a look over here. My assistant Timaeus here is helping me with my research. I'm guessing you may have met in Mondstadt already. Hello! I've just gotten hold of the data from your experiment. The report is already up on the board there. Wow! Look at all the data! You got all these results from one <laughs> slime battle? 
<laughs> I wouldn't call them results, inferences, and a few daring guesses, perhaps. I think the most rational direction would be to expound on the phylogenetic relationship between this traveler and the slimes. Okay. Hmm, consider. Yeah. You don't have a vision, but you can manipulate elemental energy. The slimes don't have visions either, yet they too are able to manipulate the elements. Following yeah. this line of like thought, so calling I'm a slime. Sure we'll I think so. To establish okay. a basis in fact. Great. Not bad for a point of entry. But strictly speaking, slimes are elemental life forms. In other words, beings consisting entirely of the elements. So your hypothesis is stupid. Or even the whopper flower might be a better analogy. But tracing back the phylogenetic relationships between plants and, and animals, flower and I just think of like a whopper burger. You might like have to trace back to mm -hmm. the world's origins. Okay. In that sense, things might get difficult, don't you think? Uh, like the little chocolate yes, balls, the whoppers. That sounds correct. <laughs> After all, we've got our primary data already. This traveler is a visitor from another world. If it turned out that she did have a phylogenetic relationship with this world, huh, now that really would be something, wouldn't it? Ah, sure. I would. <laughs> Apologies. I was so excited to get the data. I'll slow down a bit next time. Speaking See of that data, you do. to complete our research, we'll need some more. I'll be conducting analysis here for the time being. If you're keen for an update, just come and find me. Great, I'll leave you to it. Hmm. Huh. Looks like the potion's ready. I'll try a little first. If all goes well, I'll hand it over to you. Mm-hmm. In line with my expectations. Ready to drink. Remember to keep calm at all times, and breathe deeply if you feel unwell. Experimental potion. Tasty? You've got a funny look on your face. It's burning a bit? You said you tried some already. You sure it was ready? What's happened to her? Hmm? Oh, this was the result I was expecting. And a very positive one at that. This potion channels elemental power into the body. Under normal circumstances, a repelling reaction is to be expected. But if the internal elemental flow is unimpeded, you'll only experience momentary discomfort. Once the flow is complete, there won't be any other effects. So you knew you'd be sick and still drinking? <laughs> <laughs> it was my own concoction, of course. Only natural for me to be the guinea pig. But of course, you're my assistant. By all sense and reason, it would be wrong of me to place that risk onto you. Hello, Beta. In conclusion, points for you. I'd say we have our conclusion. As far as elemental energy is concerned, you're no different from anyone else in this world. Nothing peculiar. Aw, Paimon wanted something cooler to have. <laughs> <laughs> then again, better an ordinary result than a peculiar result. Peculiar results have a tendency to be of the... undesirable variety. I feel like you're referring to something in particular. The good thing about ordinary is that everything is an object of reference, and everyone understands you. People are the same, they can understand, empathize, encourage, and support one another. When you're sick, a doctor can diagnose you because they are you. When something goes wrong, you can ask people who've made the same mistake for their experience because you are them. But a peculiar person, they don't have much recourse for the things we take for granted. The essence of their life is fundamentally different. For example, a human can't understand the life of a pyro regisfine or an eye of the storm. Have I explained it clearly enough? Yeah. To sum up, this has been a positive outcome. Going forward, you can use your elemental power without fear. Timaeus, the results of the new experiment are out. If you could see to collating them. Just a moment, sir. I'll handle it. 
<laughs> you gave me a lot to consider. Really stretched my limits. I'm thinking a lot clearer now. Oh, having you down as an animal <laughs> wasn't very precise of me, but starting with the premise of an elemental life form? Now that was... Not bad. I think it's an interesting line of inquiry. Whatever the truth of the matter, I'd like your research at the fore as opposed to my judgment. <laughs> you can count on me, sir. I'll extract a result satisfactory to all. Is he trying to join the knights? He's starting to sound like a sucker. Oh, <laughs> starting to? Yeah. What Paimon meant to say was, that's the spirit. Mr. Albedo, say something. <laughs> hmm. Before we can proceed with our research, I need to prepare something. Wait one moment. If you're interested, why not have a look around? It may help to pass the time. I want to know what the hell you're preparing, dude. Don't want to talk to him? All this. Doesn't really care about observing everything. I'm back. Did you see anything interesting? Things are pretty organized. Hmm. Agreed. I'd love to find a moment to put them all in order. Still, experiments come first. Now, oh, about the thing you prepared. The research. There may be significant differences between different worlds. Take Tevat, for example. Here, those with visions can manipulate the elements. But worlds may well exist where only one person is able to do so. Or even everyone. Or maybe no so, one. Uh, leaving elements to one side. Do you possess any... unique abilities? Ones that don't exist in this world? I think answering this question calls for the same methodology as last time. In other words, time for the next experiment. No, no. You shan't be required to exert quite so much effort this time around. Now, see this pillar here? Use your willpower to try and break it. You think Paimon knows how to do that stuff? <laughs> that was your best effort? Hmm. Well, can't be helped, I suppose. Uh, have you tried using your elemental power with food? I don't mean for cooking as such. Uh, rather... Channeling the power into the ingredients themselves. What? I'm curious to see how the taste and texture respond. It may even help with proliferation. Sure, you want just peckish. <laughs> I suppose I have a curiosity for things that others find surprising. Anyway, why don't you cook us up a freak. sunshine sprat? <laughs> I've just finished preparing the recipe. Cooking? Pino was looking forward to more mad scientist stuff. <laughs> She loved to eat. Not only is this recipe a staple for me, it's also worth experimenting with and highly nutritious. Hmm. Paimon bets you're just hungry. That does sound yummy, though. Hmm. Okay, Paimon approves. That was easy to get you on the yeah. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good buddies are always on the same page. Hmm. I'll leave you to it then. Looking forward to the results. If there's anything left over, maybe Timaeus can finish the last morsels. Oh, he just gets little morsels. Someone doesn't think we'll have that problem. How are we gonna channel elemental power into the food? Maybe try the willpower thing again. Hmm, an average outcome experimentally, but you've really brought out the flavor. You seem well versed in the science of gastronomy. As far as the proliferation hypothesis is concerned, we've come up short. 
Seems like food presents the same headaches in your world as it does ours. Unless... Could it be that the natural laws of this world are limiting your unique abilities? Definitely. We just didn't know how to channel elemental power into the food. It's a little more complicated than adding herbs and spices, you know. Not to worry. At least we put some food to good use. No need to feel disheartened. And here's your portion. Enjoy. I can box it up if you like. Woohoo! Thanks! Glad you were paying attention. You're Paimon's new favorite. I can tell that you're good friends. Paimon was keeping an eye on you and your safety during the whole experiment. Aww. Not that Paimon would have been able to do much if things had gone wrong. But anyway. Hey! You were being nice a second ago! <laughs> But you do have tasty recipes, so Paimon forgives you. And you're right, we are good friends. You have good friends too, right? Good students? I don't think he has friends. Uh, yes, I'm fortunate too, I suppose. Anyway, good students, but... Moving on to the next experiment. Doesn't seem like the type to have friends. There are of alchemical items here. Keeping them in their proper place is a challenge at the best of times. A while ago, I had the misfortune of misplacing a batch. I managed to retrieve the majority, but two vials have been evading me. Animal crystal fly elemental extract and electrohypostasis powder. Paimon's barely finished eating and you want us to go gathering again? Don't worry if you can't locate them. I was planning to replace them anyway. Though finding them would save me the hassle. If you Anything have, we can do say, for you. a superpower, like night vision or vibratory sensing, Lost property would be a thing of the past. I must have dropped them somewhere in the area where you were looking just now. So, guess we'd better take a look. Oh yeah, you could use elemental sight. The extract of an animal crystal fly can only be animal elemental energy, right? This has got to be it! Still in one piece! Good thing the vial's so strong! This must be electrohypostasis powder! Goodness! He managed to find them. Incredible. A thousand thanks. I'm wondering... This elemental sight... This is what allowed you to locate the items and... Yes, like my eagle vision, dude. Mountains, correct? Yep. Guess it does sort of count as a superpower, huh? Unfortunately, though elemental sight is seldom seen, it is not unheard of in Tevat. Only a never-before-seen otherworldly power would be of benefit to my research. You mean, we failed again? Don't be disheartened. This falls entirely within my expectations. Besides, getting these items back, I'd call this a very worthwhile experiment. I have to commend your deduction that the items would contain elemental traces. Right then. Up until now, our research has focused on your otherworldly identity. Our research on your identity as one of us is just beginning. In essence, the differences between humans are reflected in our intellectual and physical capabilities. Let's start with physical. Looking you want know, to start with physical? with physical? Can you see what Sucrose is doing? And if you jump from here and landed on that cliff, the one over there, could you see her then? So what about if you planted a single blow on the mountain face here, and it burst into a million fragments? Then could you see her? Sounds like we're still on a superpower mm -hmm. test, yeah. Then I shouldn't get too excited. Are still, these all things Albedo could do? We'll gain a more thorough understanding with an experiment. That would be impressive. I know of a location that will be perfect for a physical test. Please, follow me. And then Albedo goes back to his bedroom and puts on some berry white and he's just like, <laughs> this is the perfect location for a physical test. Oh God. Uh, all right, so Albedo's interesting. Um, Rosaria is, she's not sassy. She's kind of a bitch. But she, I mean, she's just very direct and upfront and uh, 
is not afraid to speak her mind and does not sugarcoat things. Um, again, I like the fact that we still haven't really met a, a two of the same character. And uh, so I'm, I'm enjoying that. Rosaria is cynical. Yeah, cynical is um, a good way to put it too. Well, I, you started it. You said that in the episode. Okay. Um, you know, she, she is direct. She is honest. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't explain the kind of sharper edge that she has. Yeah. The sharper edge is the lens through which she, she sees the world, which is through a cynical lens. Mm -hmm. Somebody could be honest and direct through like rose colored goggles and they're going to see the world totally different from her and therefore mm -hmm. their language will be different. Um, she is cynical and yet usually cynicism is really unattractive to me because it's easy, right? Like cynicism is easy. Being yeah. jaded is easy. Putting yourself out there, being optimistic, having hope, that's tougher. And more often than not, people are going to call you foolish for doing it. So like you are putting yourself out there in a vulnerable state just by being optimistic mm -hmm. in our modern society. Um, so usually cynicism to me is, is an unattractive quality. It's not so much with her. And I don't know exactly why. That's what I'm saying. And like, I want to say I feel like if she was a, if the tables were turned, she was a guy, I probably, I don't know if I would be, I don't know, would it be, would it be different? That's what I'm trying to think. I'm like, I don't think I like her as a guy. Yeah. So that's what, that, that's the, that's the thing. Like, yeah, that's what I, I don't get. I'm like, I'm like, why would I, if I, don't, I don't like this personality. For some reason it works on her, but I'm not saying it would work on, you know, all uh, females. You know, like that sort of cynicism. I don't think so. Nope. Just, I think it's to me the del uh, the delivery from the uh, voice actress. Yeah. Um, I think she's doing a good job of uh, not having it be so con because a lot of times cynicism is very condescending. It's not that she wasn't like condescending kind of to the to the little girl or whatever, but like it was just not in a very like I said, it was it was it was direct. Yes, it was cynical. Yes, but it. I didn't feel like she was trying to hurt her. Hmm. She wasn't trying to soften the blow. She wasn't trying to lessen it because like, okay, you're just, you know, uh, a cute little girl and I don't want to, you know, shatter your world or whatever. But I didn't feel like she was doing it just to be a dick. That's what it is. She wasn't trying to hurt her, but she was giving her the respect of not trying to protect her either. Yeah. That's pretty rare. It's pretty yeah. rare that somebody can find where that line is and stay on it versus falling on one side or the other. Because like really nice people are often trying to protect the feelings of someone mm -hmm. else. I don't say that to be critical. I do that. I do that every single day. I'm not trying to judge one way or the other, but I'm just saying like it's rare that you find somebody who's like, I'm not trying to hurt you, mm -hmm. but I respect you enough not to protect you either. And I'm just going to give it to you straight. Yeah. It's pretty rare that somebody can pull off that delivery, and she does very well. Albedo with the experiments. Uh, again, at times, it feels like he is, like, super disappointed that we're not more special. Yeah. Like, do you have four hearts? Do you have, like, you know, two heads? Are you, is she attached to you with a string? Has he never seen, like, uh, little pixies <laughs> like Paimon in this world before? Because he seems to know a lot, so it seems like he would be... I mean, I guess, you know, we look like our, you know, the Traveler, our character, or whatever... Um, looks like everyone else in this world. So, you know, yes, you might see uh, other like, you know, little fairies like um, Paimon, but it doesn't mean that they're not like all. Yeah. So I can see why now he thought that she was from the, the same world as uh, as a traveler. Um, I don't know how I feel about Albedo one way or the other. Like, I don't dislike him, but I don't really like love him. Like, oh, yes, Albedo, like, you know. Can't wait for for more scenes with him. Um, so it'll be interesting to see like how that changes as we continue to watch this and learn more about him. Um, like right now, I'm not I'm not like hooked or I'm not against him. I'm just you know I'm just kind of like neutral with Albedo, kind of like how he is. He lacks people skills. Yeah. So that's some charm. It can be. It can also be kind of off putting. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's. I think that's one of the things I picked up on probably most significantly was just the like this dude does not know how to talk to people yeah like he does and not in the same not in the same way of like uh sucrose who's really sweet and endearing and just kind of like very bookish and nerdy in, in a in an adorable way 
Albedo doesn't have the adorability factor. Mm-hmm. Like his is something different. And to your point, I don't know that I really have a firm hold on it other than just being like, he's not good with people. Like he doesn't spend time with people. That's very yeah. clear. He doesn't know how to interact with them. Great. Very much a scientist. Like, yeah. Um, very much the like, everybody is a walking experiment. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you function? What can I do to you? If I, if I manipulate you, is that going to do like, it's like, Dude, I'm a person. Back off. <laughs> like, it's it's very, in, it makes him a very interesting character, but like out in the real world makes him very like bizarre. I also feel like his artwork are kind of like this world's like NFTs. Like he's trying to, <laughs> he's trying to pitch them as if they're like more special and worth something than they actually are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. When they, when they showed the art, I was like, that's. And I, think, I, I was expecting more. And I think that triggered something like, I'm like, oh, I, I feel like we s- saw him have artwork in his uh, collected miscellany trailer as well. And it was the same mm. thing. It was like very unimpressive. We're like, what the oh, hell is that? Oh, yeah, we did. Right? We did. So I think that's kind of funny. I mean, it's I mean a, I'm a terrible artist. He's much better than me, but. It's enjoyable. And very rarely are like great scientists, great artists, right? Yeah. Like they're different parts of the brain. So it. It all is in line with his character. Like Genshin's done a good impact. Mm-hmm. Or Genshin Impact. Genshin's done a good impact. <laughs> what can I say? Um, Genshin Impact has done a good job staying true to the character. And I love the fact that he's a scientist, but he tries his hand at art. Because like, yeah. that's a way of staying true to the character without falling into stereotypes and archetypes. Like usually when you meet scientists in TV shows and films and books, they're like, they are the super nerdy scientists who spend all day in the lab, all night on the computer or reading books. Like they're not interested in anything artistic. They at least have him being interested. Mm -hmm. Like he really is out there to experience what the world has to offer. Yeah. Um, And I think that's, that's remarkable. Whatever lens you see the world through, whether it's as an artist or a scientist or whatever, the idea of going out and experiencing the world and trying your hand, everything it has to offer, I think is a great outlook on life. Um, and I love the fact that when they talked about him as a scientist, they talked about him as searching for truth. Mm-hmm. So I was like, ah, yeah, like that really is what the pursuit of science is. But so often we hear like the search for truth with like a religious connotation. Like so often it goes into like the realm of magical as opposed to the realm of scientific. And yet science is magic. Like if you ever perform experiments in school, like science is fucking cool yeah and experiments are amazing and it is the search for truth it is the search for truth of how the world works and trying to figure that out and then and then we've done so good on the world that now we're looking at the universe and like that's a whole nother mind-blowing thing um but yeah all of that to say i appreciate the character let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments and if you watch with us on patreon then we're gonna continue this next week and if you watch with us on youtube then we're gonna go right into the next part yeah we are yeah All right, now jump. You want us to jump from up here? Not necessarily. Not if you know of a better method, that is. Better method to die? I know, right? Whatever method you choose, the experiment will end when you reach the opposite shore of the lake. I will factor the time expended and your top speed into my comparative analysis. Without limitations, we complete tasks intuitively using the method that seems most rational to us. Some of us would be unable to stand the icy waters. Yeah, me. Others yeah. might find the whole thing rather refreshing. No matter what choice you make, it's all a part of the experiment. For me, then if you would Stop please, fucking doing I'd that, really dude. Wait the result. <laughs> Spotting to risks, providing uh, emotional support. So if we do decide to go swimming, you gonna dive in with us? No. Unless you're thinking of conducting competitive research. Oh. Uh, forget my mundane thing. <laughs> oh my god! In water with those big chunks of ice. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No way. How do you do? Great work. I've never seen a performance quite like it. Damn right. Your reputation precedes you, traveler. The data shows that you're easily outperforming the average citizen in Mondstadt. But you followed us the whole way without breaking a sweat. Me? 
Actually, I used alchemy to cheat a little. But anyway. <laughs> you see, Mr. Being a cheater. do not affect you. I should be able to make various inferences about the otherworldly civilization you belong to. If the natural laws of Tevad do affect you, then I shall be able to make inferences into the kind of evolution that would occur under the absence of such effects. The innumerable possibilities that this could present, the captivating insights, it would be something to savor again and again. But how does this help your research? You've helped me to unravel many of the problems that were holding it back. When we return to the campsite, I should be able to show you something interesting. Okay. I may be about to make some analogies between you and a few unusual specimens. I hope you won't be offended. Gold, petrified trees, a sun eight times the size of our own. The essence of the investigative process is enthralling, but such feelings are inevitably fleeting in nature. I'm willing to pour all my energy into research, and yet specimens are finite. As the unknown transitions into the realm of scientific understanding, the feeling of enlightenment is lost. All these things that start out as objects of fascination end up possessing the prosaic mundanity of a sunsetia or a sweet flower. They cease to be noteworthy. Oh, so that's why you wanted to sketch those hilly trails? Because you got to see something new and interesting and the differences between them? Paimon gets exactly. it. To quote my exact words from earlier, these creatures are, for the most part, quite boring, not worth closer inspection. There is precious little about them that serves to pique my curiosity now. So after all these experiments, are we gonna be like boring to you, <laughs> like sketches? Probably. Of course not. Oh. You have been of great assistance to me, and I will remember this friendship for a lifetime. I was kind of hoping he was gonna say yes. <laughs> Before we head back to the campsite, there's one more experiment. Intelligence. Follow me. There are some other ruins nearby. I imagine you must have encountered more than a few conundrums during your travels. I'd like to observe your intelligence by means of a practical test of your capabilities, much as we did for the physical test. I'd like you to explore these ruins and return with your findings. There are two puzzles located at the far ends of the ruins. After completion, you should be able to activate the mechanism in the center. As with the physical test, there are no restrictions. Everything you do is an action I wish to observe. Remember, there's a well, there's a way. It's a test of intellect. So should you get lucky in any way, that won't be factored in as part of the test. So, let's see you in action. Start wherever you like. It now be possible to activate the central mechanism. Exactly what will happen when you do is something I'm looking forward to finding out. Oh. And death. Hey, yeah. Oh. Seems that the water level has suddenly decreased. We should be able to see what's in the water now. Let's have a look. Funky signs. What's this? To the best of my knowledge, these belong to a script of some kind. They can be found all over Tevat, but they've never given up their secrets. There's still a lot to learn about them. And as for why they should ever have come to rest here, a true mystery. Hmm. Let me make a copy first. I'll make time to go over them in greater detail after our research. Another thing for the don't understand list. <laughs> Unsolvable mystery this, weird experiment that. It'd be nice to get some cool results for once. Agreed, Paimon. Seems like if you want the reward, you gotta pay the price. I've truly gained a lot from all this. Comparatively, the little reward I can offer is too small to mention. Let me return to the campsite first. By the time you get back, I may just have a fleeting miracle for you to witness. Oh, just just yeah. a miracle. Cool. Paimon's kind of looking forward to seeing the results of all this brain ache. <laughs> brain ache. <laughs> I can't think of anything better to do. Let's head back to the campsite. Not so fast. You're not leaving until I'm convinced Ooh. that nothing dangerous is going on here. You! 
You didn't leave the mountain? I've been following this entire time. You certainly did not. And I've witnessed everything that you and Albedo have been up to. That's my king. You let your guards down. Or maybe you were drawn in by his compelling sounding hypothesis and friendly demeanor. No. Taking orders from a complete stranger? Drinking anonymous potions? <laughs> Participating in all kinds of strange experiments. Just got an appointment drinking an anonymous point. Yeah. Believe you were tricked than that you would be so naive. Or perhaps you were colluding from the beginning. What are you having a beta? Your guard's so high you can't even see over the top of it. Ha! <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think. He could be a saint for all you know. But I understand him a little better than you, Outlander. I'm only concerned with one thing. Whether his alchemy has transformed you into something more sinister. No way! Paimon would have sensed it! And anyway, he didn't even use any alchemy! With an alchemist of his level, you wouldn't sense a thing. In any case, I'm not about to let a potential threat back into Mondstadt. So... Got the fighter? What are you gonna do? <laughs> I've gotta hand it to you. You have your moments. If I can be sure that nothing you came into contact with is dangerous, that's good enough for me. I've investigated everything else. The only items left on the agenda are these symbols. But we don't even know what they mean. Hmm. That much is true. Not to mention, seems like there's nothing more to them. But for insurance purposes, I'd better make a copy. Just so antagonist. For insurance purposes, you're gonna go file paperwork? <laughs> location of interest. Regular patrols should be set up here. Now then. Guard these symbols that mean nothing. I deem that you pose no immediate threat. Which is what I was hoping. How I did you determine that? Very unhappy sister if you made me work overtime on your account. Overtime? Before we go our separate ways, Outlander, a word of advice. Don't be so quick to trust Albedo. And don't repeat the same mistakes that you did this time. You made a lot of rash decisions today. So we should trust you. She's gone. So stubborn. Monstad doesn't have many people like that. Maybe she's lack uh, security. Never mind her. Let's go see Albedo. You're back. Good timing. I've just about reached the conclusion. You took quite a while. Did you get held up on the way back? Quite literally by a nun, no less. Oh, Time you did tell results. the truth. We got a myriad of data today, and it was very difficult to finish all the research in one go. But the integral preliminary conclusion that I can offer you is, you're very much like a human from this world. You couldn't okay, tell great. just by looking? Yeah. We spent all day working our butts off for that? <laughs> tell him, Paimon. I understand that this may have seemed self-evident to you, but in fact, nothing in this world should be taken for granted. Have you ever considered that the world of Tevat may have a natural hostility to outlanders? Mm, the gods would know. the natural laws of this world. You're able to converse with me here without consequence, and nothing seems amiss. But it's arguably a small miracle. The only other life form that, like you, has come here from afar is the seed that I mentioned. Under the effects of Tevat's natural laws, it isn't even able to sprout, let alone bloom. But after I observed you, I had another idea. Imitating you helped to inspire my alchemy. And so... I've created a clone of you. It looks like something's appearing! The transition from nothing into something, from shoot to stem, and now to fruition. Is not nurturing otherworldly life also nurturing the world itself? <sighs> it would seem that that's as far as we go. A transient bloom of incomparable beauty. Life's proudest achievement. Hyman thought with all our efforts, it might have bloomed forever. And it didn't even have any fruit. Life is a manifold tapestry of free entities. Its value shouldn't derive from how long it stays with us. Even a momentary burst is precious. A short life can be well lived. A life lived efficiently, 
Live to perfection is necessarily one unburdened by loneliness. So, are you living a perfect life, Albedo? Do you understand Alberto? what I meant about us conversing here, arguably being a small miracle? I wonder how my brother is. Things feel a little heavy right now. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't be sad. You've got Paimon to look after you. Albedo, Paimon really wants to be your friend. Aww. Thank you both. Even if dispelling loneliness is not essential for life, it certainly doesn't hurt. Your help inspired me to discover the means to make a flower bloom. So I'm a helpful specimen. I mean that the time I've spent traveling with you in the mountains was a valuable journey for me. Oh, in the future, good. if the need arises, can I solicit your help again? Well, glad I can count on you. I made a point throughout of telling her how ordinary the results were. But what was that sediment I saw forming at the bottom of the vial? It should not have been there. What could it mean? Hmm. Those born of earth are bound by its imperfections. But those born of chalk are free of impurities. You and I are alike. Both composed of a substance that has yet to be fully defined. Hmm. If one day... I lose control. Destroy Monster. Destroy everything. Can I rely on you to stop me? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, that took a turn. Yeah. Hey, it's Sucrose. Are you here to explore the snowy mountain too? Yeah. You scared me. Delayed reaction. Please, don't scare me like that. I was giving my research report some much needed consideration. But you were just standing over there, staring into space. <laughs> just thinking. Not at all. I was just thinking of a name for a new subspecies of sweet flower I propagated. It has seeds that are four times as large as normal. Oh, are you interested? Wonderful. Next time, please allow me to show you the fruits of my work. It's a shame. If I wasn't coming to this mountain, I would have brought some samples with me. Yeah. Weren't you doing research in the city? How come you're here? Timaeus and I were helping Albedo organize research data. Who's watching the shop? Hmm. Timaeus just left, in fact. You didn't run into him? Sure didn't. He said that he wasn't as sharp as Albedo when it came to data. By quite a long shot, in fact. The significance of some things Albedo is able to grasp almost immediately. But we, on the other hand, take considerable time. I fear that this must be the difference in our knowledge and experience showing. Tamei seemed rather depressed about the matter. He said he was going to take a walk, so I'm currently settling the leftover affairs myself. I was originally going to take a look around myself after finishing up here, but unexpectedly, I gleaned some interesting data from these reports. But, well, <sighs> guess my search for secrets will have to wait. You can search for your secrets. Ooh, what secrets? <laughs> hmm. Actually, do you two have time right now? Don't have anything on us but that. Then, could I ask you for a favor? In truth, I feel like Albedo is concealing something from myself and Timaeus. But Most certainly is. A teacher? What would a teacher have to hide from his students? That's true. So that would make but not trust him. I feel like he's always hiding something. It is my personal guess that it is some great secret of alchemy. Wait, how are you so sure? Timaeus and I are both passionate researchers of alchemy. <sighs> if it was anything else, Albedo wouldn't have any reason to hide it from us. Hmm. <clears throat> have a point. Could you help me investigate what it is that Albedo's hiding? Please. I'm. I'm just too curious. Might not like what you find. What do you think? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's take a little trip, shall we? I'm on so adorable. She is. Ooh, festering desire. Albedo! Hmm? Why are you here? Are you lost? We're not. A secret? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Our mission calls for a delicate approach. Uh, sure, but still. 
Actually, you've arrived at just the right moment. I have business with you too, in fact. Here, catch. Huh? What's this? As you can see, it is a sword. <laughs> yes! I did not make the sword. However, I did add some alchemical touches to it. Would you like to try it out? Sure! My research indicates that this sword has some unique properties. Only you can use it. But I need to hmm. gather data from it quite urgently. So, could I bother you to use it in battle? It's gonna suck your power! Wait a second! How can there be a- Very astute of you. This sword has indeed had a curse laid upon it. Hmm. An ordinary person would be unable to wield it at all. However, you are an exception. Huh? Or perhaps I should say that only you are immune to the curse. As such, who could I find to help me if not you? We gain little from saying more. Go find some monsters nearby. After all, some things are best discovered through practice. So she can only wield it because she's not in this world? I don't know, he cut off what Paimon said about this word, so I missed it. Yeah. I mean, there's a curse, I was very missed like what she had picked up on. Go back to that. Wait a second! How can there How can there be a soul sword that only one person can use? Okay. And it said the other one said any adverse side effects. Okay. Very astute of you. How about those over there? Paimon still has a bad feeling about this. Yeah. Over here, it's with this brat. Oh, he's a ferocious man. You thief. I'm sorry, what? Orders? There are treasure orders in a place this cold? <laughs> There's treasure everywhere. Talk. Hand it over. Even in cold places, Paimon. <laughs> uh, thanks, Albedo. Now that's rich. Treasure orders calling us thieves? Mm -hmm. They certainly arrived quickly. You were expecting them? Mm -hmm. No. They seem to have been talking about this sword. What's going on? I simply just Why are took you it from somebody. Me like that? Of course I didn't steal the sword. <laughs> Not long ago, the knights caught a band of treasure hoarders outside the city. The goods they were smuggling were also impounded. This sword was one of those items. We believed it to be stolen plunder, but no one came to claim it. Nor could we find out where it came from. So it languished in our stores. I noticed it quite by chance while in our storehouse. To tell you the truth, such an old sword would see little use outside of alchemy. Uh, you claimed it for yourself just like that? So then what happened? You just took it with you? Indeed. And I initially intended to perform some experiments on it, but I unexpectedly discovered its true origins in the process. This ancient-looking weapon once passed through the hands of a now-deceased blacksmith. It is a legendary, magical sword. A magical sword? It is said that the smith vanished not long after creating the weapon, with the weapon subsequently becoming lost to time. Working backwards from its eventual fate as plunder, one can guess that it was then was stolen the by the God? treasure hoarders, or it remained in obscurity till recently. The blacksmith who made this weapon disappeared? That's kind of spooky. No wonder it's cursed. Exactly. I think that humans make such a weapon. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not a human. Do you know the story of Durin in this mountain? Durin was the black dragon who menaced Mondstadt before finally being defeated by the combined efforts of Dvalin and the Animo Archon Barbados. After a fierce battle, the vanquished Durin crashed to ruin here, falling into the thick snow. Snow gathers atop this mountain and never melts, which is a most curious phenomenon. Which leads one to wonder, was Durin's fall here purely by chance, or was it intent? Could it really have been intent? Perhaps this place was chosen as a gravesite precisely so that the snow's power could seal the corrosive toxin coming from Durin's body. That seems plausible that Barbados would think of such a method. Huh. Was Barbados such a capable god? Well, these Sounds are like just it. my mm -hmm. postulations. I don't have any evidence. 
But what's for certain is that this mountain and Durin are deeply intertwined. In fact, I believe that the very sword in your hand has Durin's remains in it. A dragon's You're trying to unleash him? Indeed. The dragon's eyes, claws, and scales ground into dust before being used to coat the blade. In this way, Durin's corruption and venom entered into the sword and became the source of its power. And now it's in you. It's very advanced craftsmanship. I presume that having successfully forged the weapon, the smith must have tried it out themselves in their joy. Oh, no. But hmm. using the sword in battle would have allowed the corruption to seep through the blade's handle and into their bodies. Ordinary mortals cannot withstand such power. The blacksmith must then have fled, driven mad by the curse, before meeting their end in some unknown place. <laughs> You've purified the volunteers before, which is a very rare ability indeed. This ability has protected you from being corrupted or poisoned, and you can completely eliminate their effects. Which is why you, and only you, can properly wield this sword. Still, this sword really is huge! <laughs> Yikes! It's, it's come alive! As far as I'm concerned, this is where the real experiment begins. This sword is still very weak at present. However, it is able to absorb energy. And through that, it is able to constantly become stronger. In it's some a grog sense, sword. Like you could even kill it and, it is a living yeah. thing. and feed it. Well then, traveler. It feeds up. With it to your heart's content. I Death need you to help it grow. I believe that we will soon have all the proof that we need. The chalk prince and the dragon. Is, is the chalk prince the dragon as well? Um, Because he talked about, will you be able to stop me? Mm -hmm. Um... Like he's gonna transform into something like like he like he is a dragon himself. Yeah, I mean, and he referenced the the sort of like similarity between him and the traveler, right? Like they're both mm -hmm. there's something otherworldly about the two of them. Yeah. Um, and he said like if I if I can't control myself or something to that effect, and like break free and destroy Mondstadt, mm -hmm. so. I don't know. In my brain, I was drawing parallels to to Naruto. I'm like, oh, does he have a nine tailed beast in him? Like. It's gonna come out and kill everyone, but yeah, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good question. Um, after Rosaria tells us, like you know, Albedo is not really to be trusted. He then tells us to grab this sword and like go do research, and we're the only ones that can that can use it. Yeah. Uh, so again, like Paimon said, she had a bad feeling. I was like, okay, yeah, this is this just doesn't seem right. Something here is off. Um, and maybe he. Is uh, the sleeping dragon or whatever, the one that's like underneath all the, the snow. And he is like the essence of that dragon. Um, and is trying to get uh, the traveler to like free him so he can go back into his natural form. That'd be cool. But I don't think that's actually gonna happen. That's just my crazy theory. I like the theory. <laughs> um. Pretty sad story about the blacksmith. Yeah. He met with an unfortunate end, it sounds like. He did. And it seems anybody but the traveler who touches that sword is in for the same fate. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We'll be curious to see what the next chapter is with, with the sword in Albedo. Rosaria shows up and, like, once again, she's just very direct. And, and when she's saying, like, you know, all the things that we did and when when she says it, it's like, oh, yeah. It's kind of stupid just to drink like a random potion or whatever. I mean, you do it, you know, because it's part of the story and part of the quest or whatever. So you have to do it. Um, it's not really necessarily a, a choice based game uh, where you can elect, uh, elect not to do it and then have a, a different outcome or whatever. So but when she says it like that, I'm like, yeah, it, is, it does seem kind of crazy. All the things that uh, the traveler did with uh, for Albedo, just like some random person that she met. There's that part where he's like, well, the traveler should be smarter than this. The other part where he's like. Paimon should be smarter than this. Paimon's like the one who's suspicious of everyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, we we were incredibly trusting for somebody that we just met. Mm -hmm. Albedo's voice is just very calm and like one note and just relaxing. It's smooth and it's yeah. very non-aggressive. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't get super excitable or 
anything like that. It's just yeah. everything is very kind of even. And he lulls you into a sense of calm and ease, even though he's asking you to do crazy shit. Like when they when, like when they start it, they start on the top. I'm just like, and jump. And you want us to jump? It's like Paimon heard me. Jump off a cliff. Jump in some ice water. Wield this deadly cursed mm. sword. It's fine. Don't it's worry totally about cool. it. Don't, you're fine. Because you're unique and special. <laughs> oh, God. Just the more you think about it, the worse it sounds. Yeah. Um, all right. So if you watch with us on uh, Patreon, we can continue this next week. And if you're watching with us on YouTube, then we're going to go right into the next part. Yep. Torpedo! You're back. <laughs> Don't you sound <laughs> thrilled, Albedo. Hard but... on the sword, you know. Check it out. Hmm, indeed. It is as I thought. This sword grows stronger as you use it in battle. It's beating on our soul. And that's precisely what makes it special. Oh, yes. I should mention a more important matter first. I've investigated the area nearby, and I've discovered some unusual signs. It's not more thieves, is it? <laughs> But aren't we the real thieves here? That's true. <laughs> oh, that's true. She agrees. Strange traces require investigation. Whether it be thieves or something else, we shall investigate, and we shall find out. Okay. Lots of human activity here. That's for sure. Looks like more than one person too. It seems like treasure so have a camp here. Huh. Here to steal, just as usual. And that's and Paimon's job. Convenient to rob adventurers who come up here, yes. It's survival of the fittest here on this mountain, huh? All that stealing, though. And still, every last one of them still poor as dirt. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Anyone who calls us thieves gets no pity from Paimon. <laughs> Who's that? Who are these sniveling sneaks snooping around our camp? Sniveling sneaks snooping? Busted! What are the Fatui doing here? <laughs> and those treasure hoarders look just as confused as we do, too! Death the Fatui! The Fatui? And they chose to attack us within the treasure hoarder's camp. Did they follow us here? But why would they do that? Did you go rile them up while we weren't looking? Hmm. Did you? Why, I never. Um, maybe it's something we all did then. I think the Fatui are looking for this sword. <sighs> Weren't you keeping the sword super secret? How did they know it existed? Perhaps they caught sight of you using it on the mountain. If their eyes are in Sure, good, blame us. They'll yeah, right? definitely have seen how this sword stands out from the rest. They really want everything, don't they? If it has power, they want it. No. The Fatui are collecting things related to the Archons. This, I believe, is known to you. It is known. Huh. Now that you mention it, we did hear Master Diluc say that. Durin is the sworn enemy of the Animo Archon, and had power comparable to his. To say that it could rival the Archons, or was related to them, neither is an- So that's Stop how it is! I made a new discovery while sketching nearby. This There's really an that area up ahead that's <laughs> quite remarkable. Its ley lines flow differently from any other. Nearby monsters have been attracted to it and have fallen under its influence. As a result, their constitutions have come to far surpass others of the same kind. That seems convenient. Well, we're here to help this sword grow, aren't we? Might as well go try it out on those monsters. Precisely my intention. Oh, and do remember to observe how various enemies affect the sword differently while you're at it, please. Sure. All in the name of science. Sword's power has increased. I have a hypothesis concerning this. Each time the sword absorbs power from the bodies of yeah. fallen enemies, it will resonate with Durin's remains, hidden somewhere on this mountain. Holy moly, that sounds amazing! <laughs> 
Dude doesn't seem like the monocle type. He doesn't. But in the future, they will think back upon this moment with hearts full of gratitude. For this was the like day a... that the spirit the of adventure was <laughs> passed on to them. It doesn't look like the monocle like has like a lens in it. Go on. Like no, empty. brother. Albedo's at it again. <laughs> <laughs> Say that our newcomers are too green, or that the mountain is too mighty. We have taken great losses this time. What? What do you mean, great losses? A lot of people have died. You must be. Long time no see. <laughs> ah, yes, the young adventurer and her companion. It is my pleasure to see you here. I trust these frigid descents have not given you too much trouble. Ha! We can take anything it has to throw at us. <laughs> good, good. I love your talk. Wasn't that funny? But you must be here on some important duty, braving the wind and snow like this. I came here to gather the latest data on Hilly Charles and asked her to serve as my assistant. <laughs> Is that how it went? Ah, I see. A gathering of people chasing their dreams and ideals, is it? Then I wish you all the best. Farewell for now. I must go see to our new recruits. <laughs> Looks like we've made a discovery. Well, it is a magical sword after all. It's understandable that he doesn't want other people to know about it. I am listening, you know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right there. <laughs> there is no should or shouldn't here. I can answer your questions. But will you? But not right now. Uh. Right now, I have more pressing matters on hand. Pressing matters? <sighs> Let Paimon guess. We've got a part to play in it too, huh? <laughs> You're getting smarter, Paimon. Hey! Paimon will have you know that she's... <laughs> I knew she was good to offense to that. I've discovered some new habitats nearby with different monster types. I believe they will provide us with similarly varied data. You should love your research, don't you? Perseverance is key to research, and persistence is the basis of the alchemist's art. So, are you ready? Then let us go. Hmm. It seems that no one is here. Do monsters go out to run errands too? <laughs> Well then, Good question, Paimon. Would you like to take a look around before they return, or shall we go pick up the dry cleaner? <sighs> All right. Uh, what would you like to ask? So we're having a chat now. Paimon wants in. I know you must have questions, whether it be about me or about this entire situation. As I said before, 
I will answer them. Okay. But That's I will not you. deceive you. So annoyed when mm -hmm. you start to ask. things I cannot go into detail on. On these matters, you'll have to permit me to summarize a bit. Huh. Guess Albedo can be pretty straightforward when he wants to be. Mm. Alright, I expected for sure. Interrupted again? Uh, what? <laughs> what do you think? And why aren't you asking Albedo, huh? <laughs> I like they asked you instead, Paimon, if you're making those weird noises. So that reaction is priceless. It's attracted to the sword. Was my sketchbook. Paimon thinks it's just your run of the mill thief, really. To think that it dared to steal my sketchbook. Quite bold, this one. So important about your sketchbook, dude. Hmm. Looks like Albedo's got a frosty temper. I really don't think he was losing his temper like all that much. Yeah. End. You know, except for this huge cavern entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Judging from the tracks, that seems to be the case. We can't let it escape. Wait. This mountain is incredibly large. Even if there was a path within Very its bowels, stupid. such a road would not be easy to walk. <sighs> Can you feel it? The wind carries the scent of ice and stone with it. And the sound of echoes. The space within must be massive. R really? Yeah, what? As such, rash moves are of no benefit to us. But, but we've come all this way. We can't just let it leave. It is, but that doesn't mean that we should act recklessly. Why is this guy's book so important? Way. It just requires some extra work. If my guess is correct, this cavern's exit is on the other side of the mountain. You are quite the expert glider, and I am a fair hand myself. So, prepare yourself. And we'll glide across in one go. Racy. I mean, it is worth asking what's in the sketchbook that it's worth risking mm -hmm. our lives. There's a camp over there. There are so many of them. Are they trying to surround us? These guys are pretty smart. Good question, Pamela. And it was on the head honcho, as expected. <sighs> and there's been some damage. No, not your beautiful sketches. I can salvage. Let's meet at the alchemy stall in Mondstadt later, shall we? Wow. Albedo looked like he was in quite a hurry. Guess those who can't appreciate art shouldn't be able to handle it, huh? situation that's all right a few pages were destroyed but most of it is intact the temperature in the snowy mountain is sub-zero oh my god that picture was it can reach extremely low temperatures especially near that cavern what makes matters worse is that the hilly churls have drooled all over the pages oh. to leave wet paper in such low temperatures it's too dreadful to imagine it's a little dramatic dude frozen paper is a little so dramatic riddle. It doesn't take much for it to fall apart, huh? No wonder you're an alchemist. Such an ingenious mind. If the sketchbook had been severely damaged, you'd be furious, wouldn't you? What leads you to believe that? You told us there's a lot of drawings and notes inside. I must admit, I bring the sketchbook everywhere I go. However, I wouldn't fly into a rage over such a thing. For you can't find a rage over anything. Salvage it. I would just draw everything again. Yeah, exactly. Huh. How pragmatic of you. Yeah, that so happened to me, I'd get mad. Is that so? Why did we all lose our minds yeah. over right. it? Yep, all the yep. memories. Absolutely. All well said. <laughs> you took the words out of Paimon's mouth. Hmm. You're right. Redrawing everything would be a tedious endeavor. 
Especially since you're so talented, right? Uh, You've mastered you so many skills and gathered so much knowledge oh, that other that people only dream of. But That's all true. But talented people sometimes forget about that. It's one of the downsides of being smart, isn't it? Without a doubt, Paimon is an interesting creature. <laughs> yes, she is. Aw, don't put Paimon on the spot when it comes to wisdom. <laughs> Changing the subject. Cyrus told me that the hilly trails from this mountain attack and rob adventurers. The place we visited should be one of their camps. Yeah, the hilly trails here are way stronger than the ones at the bottom of the mountain. I can't disagree. I assume yep, the giant power of the dragon. This must be related to the dragon. The corruptive power emanating from Durin's remains is making the monsters stronger. Which, in tandem with the frigid climate, depopulated some mountain areas. Can you take out the sword, Traveler? Each time you fought in the mountains, this sword was absorbing power and storing it within itself. Now release the power! Moreover, thanks to your purification, the corruptive power of the dragon's blood seems to be all gone now. It's a very interesting phenomenon. It's not the first time we've done something like that. We are experts. I always wondered what purification was capable of. I knew you were capable of doing it, but seeing it with my own eyes is a unique experience. Indeed, I can't say it's the safest of weapons. <laughs> Lucky that it wasn't snatched away by those hilly girls. Otherwise, we'd be done for. Yeah, the two bigger threat. Are a threat too. What if that power could turn them into? Super, no, ultra hilly churls! <laughs> ultra <laughs> demon hilly churls! <laughs> ultra snowman. demon snowman! Now you've ruined the game! <laughs> oh. Anyway, about the sword, if it's so powerful, can't it absorb your energy as well, Albedo? That's what he's afraid of. Hmm. Would you like to try it out? No! Yikes! Such a cold gaze! I was just joking. That's fine. After all, I still hope you'll continue to use this sword. You still trust us? Even though this sword is so dangerous? Well, that was unexpected. <laughs> Albedo, you say one thing but do another. Paimon can never tell what's really on your mind. And that's the point. I have no idea what you're talking about. But I'm an open book. If you want to know why I trust you, it might be because... The unusual ones like us share a certain degree of understanding. Lonely individuals. Those who aren't like ordinary people. Just like uh, you and me. Albedo, we're back! <laughs> huh? It seems that he's not here. He's off flying he somewhere. investigating something? Or maybe he went to make some mysterious drawings. Oh, it's you. Oh, if it isn't Sucrose, what are you doing here? I'm in the final stage of my research. I have five hours and 26 minutes of leisure time today. <laughs> so I came here looking for you to inquire about previously discussed matters. You tell time very accurately. <laughs> are you a human clock? <laughs> no, no, it's nothing worth your praise. You're too kind. That wasn't a compliment. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Trevor? <laughs> I made a request regarding investigating Mr. Albedo's secret. Yep. Have you made any progress? Just more secrets. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been over a week since we talked about it. Thought you'd forgotten what? about it. Uh, over a week? I clearly... I'm not a great human clock. I've been so absorbed in my research, that matter of ours had completely slipped my mind. How can your sense of time be so strong and so weak at the same time? <laughs> so... I was so unimpressed. Do you know what it is? <gasps> That's great. Could you tell me? What do you think? Um, telling her shouldn't really matter. She can take a look too. Just no touching. The what? sword? What are you talking about? What's this? This is the answer you it's seek. A super powerful sword. Don't touch it with your bare hands. Uh, this is. Uh, th this is. I've never seen. <laughs> Look all you want. I'm not sure why, but even Paimon feels a strange sense of achievement. Astounding! It's the first.
first time I've heard of such a mysterious weapon. I can faintly feel the power coursing through the sword. It's like a living creature. Is it such a distinct feeling? This may be due to my alchemist training. I don't dare to say anything for sure, but the flow of power is very noticeable. Although this description isn't the most precise. N normally I wouldn't define things like that. Please believe me, I don't usually use such ambiguous terms. It's okay, relax across. Okay, okay, we got it. Yeah. Traveler, could you use this sword in battle? I'd like to learn more about it, but I'm unable to use it myself. I can let's look around for the right spot. Remarkable. This weapon is like no other. You're also extraordinary. No matter mm -hmm. if it's your fighting stance or the momentum of your swing, it's perfect. Ah, oh, super really special. You can only I say kind things. I didn't want to go too deep into the research, and yet I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Well, Paimon thinks that's one of your own special qualities, not the swords. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this is a mysterious yet dangerous and enticing sword. Yeah. Mr. Albedo has great up. confidence in you to have entrusted yeah. you with such an important item. Surprises you. Well, you've earned his trust with your abilities. I agree with Paimon. However, the sword hadn't absorbed much energy before it was handed to you. Huh. How did Mr. Albedo recognize its uniqueness among a pile of other items in storage? A flash of brilliance often doesn't make sense. For example, Paimon's appetite for sticky honey rose. <laughs> the way she says sticky honey rose. Oh, oh she loves it so much. I didn't eat much today. I went looking for you right after completing my experiment. Then, on the way, I ran into an adventurer trapped in the snow. I spent quite some time saving him. Oh, stomach's rumbling. Uh, no, it's not like that. It's okay. Don't be so shy. It's okay to be hungry. Just say what's on your mind. Um, Sticky honey roast. Um, let Paimon help you out. Paimon's hungry. We should grab something to eat. I'm, I'm hungry. I could really go for a. Oh. Uh, I'm just a little embarrassed. I think she wants to eat Paimon. <laughs> Admitting that you're hungry makes the food taste better. Huh. huh? Is that so? Of course! <laughs> Let's get moving. There must be some food back at the camp. It'd be lovely to have some sticky honey roast to keep us warm in this icy weather. Uh, uh, Mr. Pallet, you, you still okay? haven't gone back? Yeah. Isn't that the hot-headed adventurer from Mondstadt? Did he come here with Cyrus to explore the snowy mountain too? Why is he by the fire? F freezing. <laughs> Have you been here since I rescued you from the snow pit? I wanted to leave, but I, I got lost. I'm sorry. Uh, it's so cold that I can't move. Mr. Pallet, a trip to this mountain requires solid preparation. You shouldn't have treated it so lightly. I'd appreciate the True. assistance. I'm afraid that, in his current state, he won't be able to walk on his own. Even if we can't, we won't just leave him here, right? Yep, gotta carry him. Right. My apologies, traveler. I'm sure he feels bad about the situation. Why are you apologizing for him? Your concerns right now. You should be worried about yourself. Ah, the victory strike again! You must have already figured out why we're here. We won't let you go unless you give us that sword. Fat chance. No, please don't give them the sword. Yo, why would you give them the sword? Don't worry. Let's knock them down. Yeah. Mr. Pallet, I'll take you to a safe place quickly. Just gonna eat him. So naive. <laughs> we won't let any witness escape. This sword will make a fine gift for Her Excellency, Harbinger Senora. I heard the ruckus and came over to check. So it was you who made all this noise. What happened? Did you get into a fight? Mm -hmm. Mr. Tussle. Abedo, I didn't mean to. 
Aren't you supposed to be organizing documents? Oh, why did you come here all of a sudden? And you got into a fight with such a dangerous opponent in this terrain. Yeah, we also got in the fight. Even Paimon feels guilty. <laughs> Sorry, I was just passing by. Oh, oh sucrose. I reckon you've been led astray by yet another thing that attracted your attention. Albedo. Yeah, you right? Told her everything? We yeah, why? We told her about the sword's properties and origin. We didn't let her touch it. We know better than that. <sighs> Never mind. We couldn't have kept her in the dark for too long anyway. Sucrose is naturally drawn to obscure knowledge and mystery. She is great alchemist material indeed. Uh, uh, I promise I won't be causing trouble anymore. I swear on it's the okay, principal Sucrose. size sweet flower seed I just propagated. It's not trouble that worries me. I'm only concerned with your safety. Good job, you Mato. must be more careful next time. <sighs> anyway, what's going on with that adventurer crouching over there? <laughs> I took it upon myself to protect Mr. Pallet during the battle. He should be all right. He's I'm, just really cold. Yeah. Uh, I'm freezing. He must have caught a cold during the fight. I think he caught a cold way before the fight. I didn't consider that possibility. It's my oversight. My apologies. Oh, good lord, Sucrose. Not everything is your fault, your problem. Sure. Sucrose may seem a bit rigid, but she's a good kid with a heart of gold. She is. She's just not apologizing for her own existence. Girl. Yeah. Let her out of your sight, and she winds up in the strangest places. True. Don't worry. I'm not angry. Huh. I hope not. There mm. seems to be a shiny thingy on the sword. <laughs> Another change. The sword's power is much stronger than before. How did that happen? With Fatui. There were some ferocious characters among those Fatui soldiers. We've never seen them before. So it's the energy it's never encountered before. It caused the sword to greatly grow in strength. So... So cold. Hold on just a little longer. Uh, uh, fire? Oh no, don't touch the sword, dude. F fire. Warmth. Dude, there were other things glowing. Wait. <gasps> uh oh. The dragon's coming up now. It's collected enough energy that it's turned into a beautiful flower. Yep. <gasps> or a dead Audrey? flower. Audrey? Audrey too. That fine was brought back to life. Okay. What is it? Into position. Prepare for battle. Happy Bob. The dragon's power. If the dragon's life force can revive withered plants and empower them to such a degree, inconceivable. How could think that word you think turn out to be such a monster? Paimon almost got swallowed. <laughs> anyway, why hasn't anything like that happened before? <laughs> Most probably, it's because the sword fell to the ground. The impact must have caused its power to leak out. It's my fault. Don't make me leave, I beg you. I promise I'll see put. Why don't you grab that glowing thing? Uh, Mr. Pallid, there's no need to go into a fetal position. <sighs> Sucrose is sorry for making you do that. This cryo regisfine, having originally withered up and died here, is it because it hadn't been able to absorb the ambient corruption? After you purified the corruption, the resulting pure elemental energy not only revived it, but also enhanced it. Pure life force will cause it to constantly regenerate itself, together with its fighting spirit. The situation looks worse than I expected. I also haven't encountered any similar incidents. 
Yet, I must admit, that a phenomenon of this rarity, although unexpected, is a valuable discovery. Sucrose. Uh, yes? Keep an eye on that adventurer. Take him back to the camp. Yes, sir. As for the matters at hand, I beg your pardon, traveler, but I must ask for your further assistance. Of course, Such naturally. an unexpected mess, <laughs> and we're the only ones who can clean it up. <sighs> it must be because we keep outdoing ourselves. Yeah. Exactly what it is, Paimon. We're back! It's us again! <laughs> traveler, Paimon, welcome back. Paimon's already used to meeting Albedo like that. Fulfilled your request. Thank you so much. I knew I could count on you. Of course, because we're the same. Right? You were crucial to my research. <laughs> Glad to hear that. I'll never forget your kindness. Should be powerful enough, right? I'm giving this right back. More or less. But tell me, how do you feel? Good. There's no side effects, no corruption or poison. Nope. It looks like I've been correct all along. This guy pretending to be a prophet. <laughs> How do you like the sword? It's a nice weapon. Is that so? Regardless, it's reached the desired state. Ooh, now we gotta destroy it. Holding the sword? Albedo, what are you trying to do? Don't mess around! I want to extract the purified life force from within it. Can this force exist outside of the sword? What's impossible for some? Might be just within my reach. All done. Wow, this energy looks like a ball of light. Oh, you put it into a mysterious bottle. This sword might not be a divine weapon, but it'll make a fine memento. I hope it can be of some help during your travels. Okay. I needed it for the sake of my research. And I've already obtained the results of the experiment. This sword belongs to you. A person who knows how to use it. Thank you for your assistance with completing this research. Well then, goodbye. This dragon's life force resonates with me. Not because it's a dragon, but because I am... me. Rhine daughter. Master. Is this your creation? Ooh. The giant dragon Durin? Hmm. Was the two of us meeting really a good thing? I don't know, Albedo. You were such a mystery, dude. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little disappointed that in the Chalk Prince and the Dragon event, we did not get to see a dragon. I was expecting a dragon. I was hoping a dragon. I was thought Albedo was a dragon. Uh, and... There were no dragons. There was just talk of dragons. So, a little disappointed. In that. You gonna be okay? I don't know. I guess we got to meet Sue Cross though throughout this event, and she's um, a sweet character, but just needs I don't know, not to put the weight of the world on her shoulders. <laughs> I was gonna say somebody needs to sit her down and instill in her some confidence. Yeah. There's being thoughtful and mindful of others and courteous and, and mm -hmm. all of that is wonderful. But you go too but. far in that direction and start apologizing for like being human or like your very existence. And it's it's like, whoa, dial it back a bit. Yeah. Like find 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 the happy medium between being a total dick and apologizing for being alive. There there's a lot of middle ground in there that you can fall into. <laughs> True. Um, and and she is, she is so sweet and she's so willing to help him. And like, she, the poor girl hasn't even eaten today because she's been yeah. dragging people out of like snow entrapments and 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 helping us and like all this stuff. And it's like, oh, I didn't do this one thing. I'm so sorry. It's like, no, you had a lot going on. Like that's okay, and you should probably eat. At the same time. And the world of Genshin Impact is just too light and cherry for a dark soul such as myself because I I see Sucrose and she, you know, she is such a, a, a sweet character 
And then she talked about getting hungry. Like, oh, they're setting something up. <laughs> That's right. You thought she was going to eat everybody. I thought she was going to eat Paimon. Because <laughs> she, she, was, she was being a little cagey about the fact that she was hungry. And what specifically she might be hungry for. Exactly. Which I thought was weird. And they ne they didn't address that. Nope. Uh, so, yeah, I thought that part was, was a little odd. I'm like, why even put that in there? If it's not going to, I mean, like, just to get them to go somewhere else, like, it's fine. Like, you know, she could be hungry and to get him to move to find the traveler that she uh, helped, the adventurer or whatever, and then, like, they fight the Fatui. Okay, I get it. You got to get to that part in the story, but you didn't need the whole mystery of um, what she's hungry for and, like, why she can't say what she likes to eat and... Uh, brains. It's because it's brains. Yeah. I think it is. It's little fairy brains, like pylons. Hannibal Lecter style with a nice Chianti. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm just, I keep waiting for like those little, those little twists in there. And sometimes it's, it's like Genshin Impact is very straightforward. And I, need to... <laughs> I mean, generally my theories are out there and crazy. Um, so even like in, in, in other, uh, in other stuff, it's, a, I, I just, you know, I overthink things and um, yeah, try to think of like the most complex uh, situation. Um, that's why sometimes in our gameplay, like we have problems, you know, like we talk, like joke about we have problems with doors or whatever, because like, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> it can't be as simple as just like, like walking through this door. It's, it, it, it's, no, 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 we can't, we can't do that. We gotta, I don't know, shoot through the roof and yeah, create a ladder out of toothpicks and I don't know. <laughs> so um, I hope we see more of Albedo. Uh, he just like, again, it, so many questions from this. What is Albedo? Who is his master? What? Yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. I forget what you said. Like Hage. No. Uh, <laughs> I almost want to say like Renatar, and I know that's yeah. not right. It's it's somewhere between Rikage and Renatar. Yeah. I thought this was just like a particularly charming episode for Paimon. Yes. Um, between her like little tiny foot stomps and defiant <laughs> hands on the hips to yeah. like her love of, of sticky honey roast, like... It was just a very good showcasing episode for her character. And the way she said sticky honey rose. Every sticky time. Sticky honey rose. Yeah. yeah. You just tell she loves it so much. Uh, voice actress for that really just nailed that delivery for um, the sticky honey roast. Like, Paimon loves sticky honey rose so much that I want to go find a place where I can order sticky honey roast. Because, like, her love of it is... <laughs> <laughs> It's so palpable that I want to try it. Bucky wants to try it. Yeah. We all should try Sticky Honey Roast. Yep. Um, let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments. And if you want early ad free access, get a month ahead on our reactions for our Genshin Impact journey. Check out the description of this video for a link to Patreon. You can also join here on the YouTube membership. There's a little join button down below. Yeah. Thanks so much for checking out our reaction for Genshin Impact and the Chalk Prince and the Dragon. But just keep in mind that our reaction, it. <laughs> What he said. That's definitely not definitive. What he said. <laughs> <laughs>